public. We've, we're seeing right before our eyes the unequal application of our laws. One person can have um, documents, certified documents that they shouldn't have or that is claimed they shouldn't have and have to pay $50 million for a defense. Another man can do the same thing and they decide we ain't going to charge you. The only difference between the two is one man was the president and presidents actually have the leeway to take documents home. Senators don't. Vice presidents don't. Do not. So how do you have yours in the garage for, and it doesn't matter who you like or dislike. I'm just talking about the facts of the case. You got the thing sitting there in the garage in all kinds of dilapidated boxes. And this is the same man that when was interviewed about the other man having them, he's called him irresponsible. Now something would have told me, go hide mine. <laughs> something would have said, you know what, they might check my garage. Let me. And yet, with that, one man gets off scot-free. One man has to pay. In 2020, people marched throughout this, our nation Two billion dollars worth of damage was done to businesses. Freeways stopped. People marching. You can't get anywhere. In the name of George Floyd, Floyd was killed where? In Minnesota? They tore up Raleigh. Now what did a business in Raleigh have to do with what happened in Minnesota? And basically, no one was ever charged. A year or so later, something ugly happened. Just ugly, 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 ugly. On January the 6th. Oh, the worst thing. I'm so glad I wasn't up there. I thought it was the ugliest thing to see people climbing the Capitol walls and all that. They had the Capitol, though, up and running in a matter of days. These businesses were destroyed, $2 billion worth of damage. Some of the businesses aren't rebuilt yet. They are locking people up for what happened in January the 6th and throwing away the key. But they, they, they didn't charge anyone hardly for the summer of 2020. Same thing. See, that's, that's when you know that the country is in trouble. It's not, it doesn't have to, anything to do with who you like and who you don't like. For a country to stay together, there has to be a fair application of laws. Blacks have talked about this for ever since we've been here. Emmett Till, the bombings in Atlanta, all of the African Americans who have been hung in this country, and nobody found guilty. And we are pine the unequal application of the law and now we see it and we say nothing y'all don't hear me today you don't you don't have to agree all i want you to do is just think about it so, well he's saying that because he he's a republican i'm not a republican i've never been a republican i'm an independent so well you must be a trump guy no i'm god's man amen, amen. Thomas James wouldn't see you with my father. I represent the Lord and uh, am bold enough to just tell you the truth. Satan is trying his best. I'm going to preach fast. Stir. Satan is trying his best to get in the church. Get in the church. Get in the church. I told him Friday night he's trying to infiltrate. And it's amazing to me is how he's using our own to get into the church to infiltrate, infiltrate the church. Uh, I have been talking about it of late, and I'm going to show it to you. I had thought about not doing it. Um, but I've been disgusted with what some of the leading uh, voices in, in, in our community have been doing. Um, I just think that there ought to be a certain amount of dignity to being a Christian. 
I think, I think that there should be a certain amount of dignity to how we treat the things of God. I think as a man, there are certain things you don't say. I think as a man, there are certain things you don't say to other men. I even think as a man that there are certain things that if another man said to you, it's not funny. I'm a 62-year-old man. I can never in, 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 I can't never remember engaging in a conversation with another man about anything that I've done naked. Guys don't talk like that to each other. Now I don't know how girls talk because I ain't never been a girl, so I ain't never. I don't. I don't. I don't know about that. So I can't walk into that. I don't have the spirit of one. I'm not. I married one. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. And uh, don't get me started. I got to stay on point. Let me stay on point. But some things I don't think should be said. Some things out of respect for yourself, respect for your wife, respect for your children, respect for your race, respect for your gender. Respect for your craft. Respect for your hygiene. You don't say. And you certainly don't say before the world. David said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my mouth when the wicked is before me. Psalm 39 and 1. Kirk Franklin said this, and I'm going to preach Timothy on Club Shay Shay. So many songs that have blessed people have been written butt naked. Next question. Really? But, but not one sock on. <laughs> I straight out the bed. But if you come over to my house, don't sit on that piano bench. <laughs> sit on that piano bench. <laughs> That piano bench ain't had nothing but cheeks. Uh, <laughs> bench. All right, all right. For Jesus. Now, Next now, question. Now, okay. Now, number one, I failed to see what was so funny. What was so funny? What I would have said to a guy who would have said that to me is, hey, man, TMI, brother. Hey, man, that's too much information. Hey, brother, where are you going with that? Am I right, Doc? Just, am I right? Just, hey man, whoa, what you saying? What you saying? <laughs> and what preacher? What person who has any respect for the process of songwriting? Writing songs for Jesus? His wife? His family? For the ministry, for the process. What person would say such a thing? And then say, if you come to my house, don't sit on that piano stool. What? Is, you, you got to say something because this can't pass off as all right. Okay. Cool. Wouldn't you always say and stuff, why aren't you? See, it's things like that. I could never, not that I was ever a big fan, but I could never buy a record by someone who would say such a thing about his own music. Now, whether it's true or not, I'm sure there are songwriters uh, that have done worse. I'm sure he's not the first one. That's not the point. They at least had the decency to not say it. At least. Because my brother now, if I, if I put it on and listen to it, now I got to think a thought that ain't natural for me to think. But well, was he naked when he wrote that one? What do I care about? 
See, that's the devil. And I would have liked to believe that I would have conducted myself in such a manner where he would have known not to go there in the first place. It seems like we are constantly lowering the bar. You know what it's called? It's called being, what I'm doing, it's called being spiritual. See, I understand that some of you, not all of you, most of you, Herb Franklin just doesn't understand that when he made that statement on Club Shay Shay, he embarrassed the entire black race. That was embarrassing. It was humiliating. I couldn't believe he said that. It was a bad look for the church, a bad look for the gospel community, a bad look for black families, a bad look for black males. We don't need anyone else to taint our image. We're already dealing with too many stereotypes lies and um, misinformation and the miseducation of the Negro. We don't need any more foolishness added to the bar. And it is lower in the bar. And, and people are too carnal-minded instead of being spiritual. And somebody needs to say something. And it most definitely agree that there is an unequal application of the law. It always has been. But I don't care for the Tangerine Mussolini. I don't agree with that part. I never will. You say you're not a Trump man, but you God's man. I don't know. But you're absolutely right. Guys don't talk like that. And as far as the protests, I just think that's just, well, in the beginning, they used to tear up black communities. The Ku Klux Klan used to riot and raid black communities and burn them down to the ground. They destroyed Rosewood in Florida over a lie. They destroyed the Black Wall Street out in Oklahoma or Kansas. That violence has been, this nation was birthed out of violence. So I don't even know if I would put the rioting uh, when Black people are protesting the evils that are done against them. I wouldn't know if I would put that historically on them. It doesn't make it right, but I don't know if I would. That would be a matter I have to investigate more of. But, you know, they always destroyed our property and communities first. But uh, truly, the status quo is afraid of an intelligent Black man that stands on his own morals and principles. And they're intimidated by a Black man that speaks his mind so eloquently and so articulately. And it has always just been a problem when an African-American male can speak for himself and stand on his own principles and standards and won't take it back and won't take it down. 